big bowls of money. Cereal in all shapes and sizes. This staple of America is finally getting the restaurant chain it deserves. The small business. Cereality. The big idea. A restaurant chain dedicated to one of America's favorite foods. Cereal. Every kind under the sun. Sold in any combination you want. Want Wheaties with Fruity Pebbles? They can do that. How about Cocoa Puffs with Fruit Loops? Done. Cereal is mixed to order and sold with all the milk you want, anytime you want. The Box. Four restaurants are already open and serving cereal, with 26 more stores under contract. He likes it. He likes it. David Roth and Rick Batcher, co-founders of Cereality. Welcome to the show, guys. Thanks for having Thanks. us. Let me first start this off. I love this. This is genius. And for everybody out there, I think more than anything, the big lesson here is no matter how uh, generic, no matter how commodity anything is, there's still a way to own it, make it yours, and make a business out of it. And taking cereal and saying, guess what? We're going to be the cereal retail, uh, retail place where people come eat cereal. So simple, so obvious, duh. <laughs> it's one of those ideas people send us letters all the time. Why didn't I think about that? And then we go, you didn't, and we did, and we trademarked it. Uh -huh. you know? now let, let's go through the concept very soon. It was basically, and you opened, is it your first one you opened up right off, outside my alma mater at the University of Pennsylvania? That was our uh, that was our second one. Second one. The first one was at Arizona State University on a college campus. Okay. The next one was across from Wharton. Okay, and basically it's a, it's a cool little... Retail outlets set up where you basically can go away. Well, you pick it up. I'm not going to do your sales. Yeah, go ahead. Ahead. Yeah, well, it's designed to be a home for cereal away from home. So the decor is such that it's not irregular tables and chairs. There's a large kitchen island. There's a, a dining room table or a living room area similar to this to enjoy your cereal in. And it is uh, just a fun, bright, lively environment. It's your best friend behind the counter wearing pajamas serving you your favorite cereal blend. I love this. And you basically have every, on the one hand, cereal you can imagine from Lucky Charms to Cocoa Puffs. And also, anybody can go in and kind of customize. Their yeah, answer. the whole idea is that you get to customize exactly what you like. We figured out that people have very, very particular habits with their cereal. They like crunchy with sweet, or they like it really whole grain and healthy, or they like it really indulgent. So you get to mix and match just the way you like it, and then we serve it in a little Chinese bucket, basically. Like, the genius of this, I'm not telling you, at least from where I sit watching it, is the nerve you hit is that you found a food that has always been being sold as a food Yet probably more than any food, it's experiential. Yeah. Eating cereal in the morning, we mm -hmm. all know, remember as kids, staring, it was this more of a reading the back of the cereal box. Absolutely. It's exactly. with the family. And, and it's so much more than eat. Now, the way I consume cereal, the night, sometimes I'll come home late and I've had a few drinks and I want to eat something and I eat cereal. And there is a magical it's all about, individual connection with people in absolutely. cereal. Absolutely. It's all about that experience, about the ritual. People eat cereal every day of the week. And what we're doing is we're saying, come have it in our place, in our home, instead of just having to do it in your home. We have 30 cereals. We have 30 toppings. You could put extra charms on any cereal you want. We go through a case of bananas a day in every in every cafe. I love it. So I can come in and say, I like my Apple Jacks, but you can put Lucky, the charms from Lucky exactly. Charms Absolutely. on top of it. Exactly. I love it. You, you have a great line also. You said 57% uh, of the people in this country have sex. 95% eat cereal. You're happy to be in the cereal business. What we say is 95% of Americans like cereal, 57% like sex, we've got cereal. <laughs> it was actually the headline of our first press release. That's I, how we announced the I, business. And what, a few other lessons in your business, what makes it work? You're the creative guy, you're the business guy. Yeah. Yeah. Always business, there's somebody who's the dreamer, the artist, and then there's the other guy who's crunching the numbers, so you got that going for you. You also took something where, and sometimes it's the greatest where everybody uses something, but kind of repackaged it. You have a new delivery system for it. Yeah. And just such simple man and here's what I love also, that people can come in, you actually can you pick it up. You customize boxes for people. Exactly. Well, we, the original idea of this is that people... So my cereal, this is my big idea, cereal. Let's get a exactly. close-up on this. Not me. They've seen me enough. There we go. Um, <laughs> so they, you, you get to pick and choose what cereals and toppings you like. We can put together in a whole box. The, the wildest thing... I told you thing, last night, what did I guys tell you I liked? What was my favorite three? I think it was Apple, Apple Jacks, Jacks, Golden Grahams, and Honey Nut Cheerios. Yeah. Now, yeah. that's what we put in another one for that's you. That's what you put in a small... So, this is the way it's served yeah. in this little... Um, little Chinese bucket like And once that. again, as any brilliant marketer, you can co-business with the Got Milk people. Yeah. So they're giving you money. And, and you know, this is life's a bowl of cherries. Uh, when we started out, we went banging on the doors of all the cereal manufacturers, and we said, hey, we have an idea. We think we can change the way people eat cereal away from home. And they said, good luck. 
Good luck. Good luck. Also, well, if they could think about it as, oh, you're going to take away from our traditional retail business. And but Quaker said, we believe in you. We're going to give you money. I love this. Now, and you get to enjoy it with our special spoon, which also is a straw. There's an opening in the end. We know, we know how everyone loves the flavor of their milk at their end of the bowl, so we created what we call the sloop, which is a soup spoon that you slurp so with, a, a and you get to drink up your exactly. milk. Exactly. I love it. So this becomes a straw and a spoon. Yeah. This is so, now, what, what do you charge for something like this? This is a... Uh, uh, Three ninety nine. Three ninety nine. Yes. <laughs> Once again, all the formula. Two scoops of cereal with two toppings and all the milk you want. People will pay for experiences because you're Absolutely. selling experience. You're not, as far as I'm concerned, you're not selling cereal. Something that probably costs you guys, I don't, you know, I'm guessing twenty cents. Well, you know, in. We're, we're selling Saturday morning. We're selling I, I, you're Saturday morning. I got, no, no, you don't have to apologize for no, your no, margins. No, I look at it. No, it's no, a no, great no, no, business. No, no. The, the, uh, the thing that's so fascinating about the price point is that well, Zagat in Chicago said we were the best bang for the buck this year in, in all of Chicago land. For us to be selling cereal like that and get that kind of review in Chicago really meant a lot to us. Okay, punching holes in this, obviously. I go, okay, great. Business, you got business from 7 in the morning till 11 in the morning. What the hell are you doing at 4 in the afternoon? At Arizona State, we have kids coming in two and two three times a day. Yeah, I agree with that. See, I was just playing devil's advocate, yeah. but mm -hmm. to me, I think cereal, and I use cereal, like I said, sometimes it's a late night snack. Yeah, well, and it's, it's important that it's not just cereal in a bowl. We have smoothies, we have parfaits, we have other hot and cold beverages. And we, we make bars. We, and we make bakery make bars, yeah. our version of a cereal bar. So you've had 7,000 inquiries, yeah. people wanting to become owner operators franchise Franchises. how do you scale this thing what's the game plan once again <clears throat> small businesses start with let's take the formula You've got a great idea an idea that has well built in 95 percent of this population's potential yeah. audience you understood people want experiential today you set something up simple great idea now how do you scale it we started by going to college kids because we knew that if college kids bought into it they'd be great brand ambassadors viral market brilliant so brilliant. We went right to college kids people said your college concept we said no went to philadelphia across from your alma mater you know who came in? Families in pajamas every weekend. We want cereal. I love it. We saw, oh my God. We also God, knew with college kids, they don't have a clock, basically. It's exactly. Basically, they're not living a typical, right. I eat my lunch here, I eat my breakfast here. Exactly. They're studying at night, they're slurping. They, you know, so it's like you have, and somebody, as you said, who's not willing to play by the rules. And people who are, that's the perfect adopter stage because they, five years from now, exactly. are going to be parents and with kids. I'm waiting for my milk, guys, by the way. <laughs> One of the most fascinating things when we open, well, the growth, the growth, you asked. We are currently, uh, we are under contract with 26 franchise units right now. We're looking at Canadian partnership for an entire country master franchise. And we're going to be growing all throughout the country. We have to basically keep up with the demand that's coming to us unsolicited. How do you, a lot of people, when they always come to me and they say, I have a great idea, the, the biggest thing they're concerned about is protecting it. Because yeah. it's like, okay, how do you now, let's say my good buddy Howard Schultz from Starbucks, he's sitting at home in his pajamas, he's watching this. Here's a guy that has built the probably, you know, the... Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the experiential food business. He goes, well, what a great idea. I'm going to have 5,000 of these tomorrow. And I'm going to call it Cereal Stop. He, wow. he, he, he called us. We've actually met with him. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> We've met with him, so he's very okay. familiar with we, the brand. We sat with him. Yeah. We had a great three-hour meeting, and he said, this is really, really good. I like what you're doing. But how do you keep a guy who has the resources to taking this and blowing it out faster and actually being the one? Yeah, right now you're talking about it, but they can end up owning it in the public consciousness. A few things. We were very, very proactive in, in trademarking everything. Dude, I'm getting my milk. Go on, keep going. Right out of the gate, we trademarked everything. We trademarked always Saturday morning phrases. We trademarked. But here's, I guess, a big question for everybody out there. Yeah. How do you trademark an idea? You've trademarked well, all the ways you sold it. You, can you actually, can't own selling a cereal experiential cut, exactly what you're doing. So how do you the, do that? One of the first things we did was we filed for, uh, do you not have any milk in there? I have milk in there. Don't worry. It's very <laughs> important. By the way, you can't eat cereal without milk. It just does. Okay, here we go. There you go. There go you ahead, go. guys. We filed for uh, a business method patent early on in the business. Um, we trademarked all of our phrases. And the best way to do it is just to grow. Just grow. Get it out just fast and nobody can meet, catch up Meet to the you. demand. Yeah. Right. This is it. Well, guys, I got to tell you, I love this. If you need an investor, not that it sounds like you do. I guarantee you got all the VCs lining up because this is a homer. It has everything. We got to stick around. We're going to have you in the forum later on. Right. David Roth and Rick Batcher, co-founders of Surreality. Thanks for being with us. More big idea ahead. More great small business ideas. I'm going to enjoy my custom-made cereal at four bucks a pop. Who's happier than these guys? Don't go anywhere. Mm.